What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm out here in the shop today doing a little service on the Volvo here. And uh, I stopped by the Volvo dealer and picked up some air fittings because that is the only place that I know that you can get them. Um, I had this trouble with my other truck as well. And I never replaced all of them. I just replaced some of the ones that were leaking. Um, I did find out that uh, what the deal is, is these are a metric O-ring thread like that right there. And uh, they're push connect on the other end and so they always leak. And there's three different sizes of them here. And you can, some of the ones on my last truck, I did get like some pipe thread ones. And if you put a decent amount of tape on them, I found out that you can put them in there and they will seal. And uh, so I had to do that in an emergency on my other truck because I had one that was leaking bad and I couldn't get one. So that's what I did. But anyway, I went by the Volvo place, as I say, and I picked up every fitting that is in those air tanks. And those fittings right there was $350. Uh, there's 11 of them, I think, in my particular truck. Um, different trucks will have different amounts or whatever. But I think these things range from uh, $25 to $40 a piece or something like that. Like that big one there, that's an expensive one. I think there's only one of those. And then uh, some of them are plastic, some of them are brass. But uh, that's what we're about to do. The truck's been sitting here. It's uh, overnight or whatever. Um, actually, over the weekend. So there shouldn't be any air in the tanks. So we'll go ahead and get these uh, unscrewed out of here. I don't know how many of them I had leaking. Um, I'd got up under there and looked before, and I think there were three or four that were seeping. Sprayed soapy water on them and whatnot because the truck will lose air pressure over, you know, two or three hours or whatever you let it set and your air get down pretty low. So uh, we're going to take care of that now, hopefully, by replacing all of these. And, I mean, I, I don't really like these air fittings, but I guess if you really look at it, because they always leak. And, uh, you know, the other style that where you tighten the nut down that's got the ferrule on it, they don't leak. But I guess with the age of the truck, you know, these are actually probably designed to last eight to ten years. And, you know, th that's about the life that they really designed these trucks for the first fleet owner, somebody's uh, purchasing it new. You know, they're not going to have the truck five or six years, so this is not a problem they'll have. This is a, the problem that the second owner will have. So we're going to get that taken care of and uh, get you guys up under there, and we'll see what we can do. So this is the wrenches I got right here. I got a one inch, inch and a quarter, and a crescent wrench to uh, go over the top of the line and push down on it to get that line to release. At least hopefully that's the idea. Um, this inch and a quarter is not exactly the right size um, because those are metric fittings. But I don't have a metric wrench that big. So that's what we're going to try to use there and I think it's going to work okay. So these are the fittings I'm referring to on the air tank down here and they have a little rubber protective boot on them like that I don't know if we're going to get that one off without getting something else but you get, get this line to release here and then unscrew the fitting and uh, there's a bunch of them alright so I got this big one here loosened up first um, got the boot slid up here put my crescent wrench over here slid it down and that pushes in this collar right here, pushes it down, and then you can pull out on the line and get it to release. And uh, it would be nice if I could cut this off because you usually don't want to use, just push it back in because the seal is going to be in the same spot on the line and whatnot. It's better if you can just cut this off, but I don't think the lines are long enough to do that, so I'm just going to have to push it back in there. Um, they don't give you any spare line to work with here. So uh, that's what we're going to do, I suppose. And let's find a wrench here. You want to make sure that you uh, open your drain valves on your air tank and uh, go ahead and get the air out of them. See, this is an inch and a quarter, and it don't really fit, but it fits good enough that it's going to work just fine because I mean these are not cheetah pipe tight stupid boot out of the way and I'm gonna keep these old fittings and uh, that way if you have an emergency say you were to hit something and break one of these off or something that uh, 
you know, it wouldn't be too big of a deal. You could put another one on there. Now, the ones on the truck here appear to be all brass. Uh, the newer trucks, I guess, have some plastic ones on there because the ones they sold me are not all brass. They are plastic. Which I would prefer to have the all brass ones. But... I guess they don't make all of them brass anymore. I don't know what the deal is with that. I think only two or three that they sold me were brass. I don't know if that was old stock or what the deal was there. So it goes something like that. And then, let's see if we can get this to go back down in there. <clears throat> and seat like that and then we'll snug it back down this is a swivel right here do that about 10 more times and we'll be done all right guys I've got all of the fittings here changed out on the back side of the tank there's one more fitting on the front side of the tank I'll show you in a minute but um, I kind of figured out what they were doing with the plastic fittings uh, and whatnot it took me a minute these are all brass that come out of here um, you have one large brass fitting right here um, this is just a straight through fitting this feeds, I believe, your rear suspension, uh, brakes, and trailer, and all that stuff. It goes to the back of the truck back there and ties in. Um, so this is your main line off your air tank. Um, these here are all the same, and these here are all the same. These are the ones that they replaced with plastic along with this smaller one here. Um, these two here are check valves for between your tanks. It's got a little air on it right here. Um, you need to pay close attention to this because you could put these in the wrong place um, and you'll have some issues there. But there's a check valve in there that air will go in, but air cannot come back out. And uh, I'll show you that over here. And the way you can tell uh, is those rubber boots that slide on the end of them is one easy way of looking at it. See how big this is on the end versus that there is smaller because that's the same size airline. That's for a half inch airline right there. You see, it got it held matched up. You see, the check valve is a lot bigger, and that'll be an indication if you're not paying any attention whenever you take your old fittings out. Um, the rubber boot is a lot bigger where these check valves were than where those fittings are. So, that's something to look at. I'm going to show you over here. See, I got all these, all these in here. And these is the check valves here. Well, there's something about the rubber boots. All of these rubber boots don't fit because the way the uh, the lines are, I mean, the way the fittings are, um, that just does not go on there. As you see, a lot of them don't fit because these were made for the brass and these were plastic fittings. I did get some of them on there. Some of them fit better than others. But uh, these are your check valves here. The... Uh, your dryer from your compressor goes into your dryer your dryer comes your main light off your dryer this is it right here feeds this front tank and uh, you have a crossover line from your front tank that crosses over to your second tank right here and that is a check valve so that these tanks here won't lose air if something up here you lose the fitting or something happens to this air system where these lines go that this air system here and your rear air system will still have air um, so you have lines coming over here I'm not sure where all these go um, haven't tra traced them down but um, you have a crossover line off of this tank as well that crosses over into the other tank I believe no I am wrong on that as well you have a uh, line here comes off this front tank so both of your crossover lines come off the front tank and feed into here and it will not back feed. So anyway, a little bit confusing to uh, try.
try to look at and explain. There's three different sizes of uh, lines there, but make sure you have those check valves in the correct spot that they come from. That is the most important thing. And I don't know why, as I say, I guess it's probably cheaper to make the plastic fittings, but I would definitely prefer the brass ones. But just go one at a time. This is that big fitting. There's only one of these. This is the one I was talking about that feeds the rear. Only one of these, you can't mess that up. It's the only place it'll go. Um, again, your check valves, and trying to see which ones are the same size. You have, this is the same size, this is the same size, and that's the same size. This one's a bigger, that's a half inch, and this is a half inch. So just pay attention to it. As I say, you can see if you put uh, this check valve here that you'll have an issue with the boot fitting where the boot would just swallow this hole and then this boot would never fit on there. So you kind of figure something was wrong. But as I say, these here are a different size and the boots just don't fit on them. That's just the just, just way it is. So um, couldn't get them to stretch over not gonna happen and there is one more uh line on the front up there that we got to change okay guys this is the other side of the air tanks here got the fairing off this is the uh other fitting i was talking about um the guy there at the dealership told me that this fitting rarely leaks but uh i told him to go ahead and give it to me anyway since i was paying uh 300 and something dollars an extra 20 bucks for that one fitting wasn't going to really matter um, I wanted to go ahead and put it on there and that way that gets that taken care of and uh, I don't have to worry with it. Bam, all done. Alright guys, so got that all fixed up. Um, I don't think those check valves are really that prone to leaking because I never changed one on my old truck. But again, I did have issues with the other fittings below them um, that would leak and I had one that was just leaking really bad and uh all i had was a, a half inch uh pipe thread fitting i believe it was and uh, i put some tape on it and it did screw in there and i got it snug down and got it taken care of uh, that was emergency repair because it didn't have a fitting couldn't get a fitting and had to do what i had to do um, again definitely do not do that on the check valves they're there for a reason that separates your air tanks um, that way if you have a line gets a hole rubbed in it something tears off uh, something breaks off or whatever that you don't lose complete air system failure uh, you'll only lose one tank or whatever the front or rear system um, and that's what those are there for that way you can get to a safe stop so uh, anyway I went ahead I'd say swapped all of them out and that way that should fix all of my air leaks that's the only ones that I know that I had is I had a couple of those fittings I had marked them again there was two or three of them um, just a minor little bubbles when you spray soap on it or whatever and uh, again, I'd lose air over a couple of hours. So uh, should have that taken care of and maybe this thing to hold air all night long, that'd be pretty sweet um, and no air leaks. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.